Right, welcome back to the Young Fan Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about everything Oxford United. My Oxford United have not started the season very, very well whatsoever. Five games into the season, we might already be hitting crisis point. Really, really worrying. You've been asking me to give my thoughts on the season so far. Carl Robinson, you know, while we're dropping some really, really worrying points, we're 22nd in the league. And um, today, I'm going to break it all down. We spoke about um, the games before Morecambe, before Lincoln. I didn't do a match reaction for both of those games. I've been really, really busy recently. I could have done a match reaction for both of those games they'd be very very similar um lincoln 2-1 last tuesday home defeat really really worrying the performance wasn't much better either and saturday the performance was slightly better i mean anything's better than what we're seeing recently um, and we lo- drew that game 1-1 dropping points again 22nd in the league and uh, four points from a possible 15 that's a lot of worry there really really is in the comment section down below oxford fans league one fans today we've been talking about everything uh, give me your thoughts in the comment section down below in your eyes, what is going wrong? League One fans as well. Maybe what are you seeing as an external perspective? Because that would be really, really fascinating as well. And uh, yeah, let's let's just see where we go with this. Could be really, really relaxed. I've made a few notes. Um, there's a lot to talk about because uh, there's a lot going wrong, unfortunately, both on and off the pitch. I've decided to sort of split this episode into three different sections. The first one being what is going wrong on the pitch for Oxford United. What are we seeing uh, on a footballing scale? What is going wrong uh, on the field? The second one talking about the summer transfer window so far. Has our summer transfer window been an ultimate failure? And are we already seeing the repercussions of a bad window? And finally, what we can do to improve the season? What can Oxford do to improve this campaign? Because like I keep saying and how I'll probably repeat myself, throughout this entire episode it has not been good enough and the only way is up um it just isn't not it just isn't a good start to the season and we have got to improve because the reality is we're in a relegation battle you know we're five games into the season and we're dropping points to the side that a lot of people expect to be in a relegation battle and um you know we're in the mix of that we're in the mix of that and we've got to sort ourselves out because there's a lot of things we can do there's a lot of things we can't do but what can we do? Because that's got to be almost a shining light in what is a very, very difficult start to the season. Let's get into it. Starting off with what is going wrong on the pitch. Now, I've spoken about a few of these stats already in the episode, but four points from possible 15. That's a worry. That is a real, real worry. Uh, three goals scored, five goals conceded, nine points off the top. Of course, we're not aiming to be top of the league. We're not aiming to be competing with the Ipswich and the other sides around that, um, really, in terms of a title race. But some of the sides, Pompey, uh, Peterborough, Bolton, uh, these sort of sides, Plymouth, these are, uh, again, there's many others, I'll be missing a few of those. We need to be up and in that mix as early as we can because you can't really be slow starters because catch up is dangerous and catch up can be, you know, it, it, it can't work really anymore. We, we've been able to do it for sort of the past, we didn't do it last year, we sort of actually started quite well. Our drop off came at the end of the season. But prior to that, we sort of had two seasons where we did start really, really badly. Carl Robinson is sort of a notoriously bad start uh, to a season kind of manager. Uh, isn't a isn't a great record to have and um, we've been able to get back into the sort of the, the competitivity of, of a playoff push and a promotion push because we've been going on a brilliant run sort of mid-season and we finished the season in brilliant style and we've started the campaign really really badly I don't think you can do that anymore I really really don't I don't think you are able to do that I don't think the, the league quality allows you to do that anymore uh, you look at the sides that are spending some really really good money you look at some of the sides that have started the season in brilliant brilliant fashion I don't think you're able to. I really, really don't. I think you've got to start um, really strong. And if you don't, you're going to either have to have a brilliant, brilliant spell of catch-up with a bit element of luck and an element of a fantastic run beating sides that you're not expected to beat. Um, and uh, you've, uh, you, you might get lucky, but I don't think you can do that anymore. I really, really don't. I think you have to start strong and with the competitivity of this division only getting you know, stronger, only getting more difficult. I don't think you can sit and and hope uh, that you might go on a 10-game win and run and, and get back into where you want to get to. You've got to gain some sort of consistency early doors. And unfortunately, we are gaining consistency of, of a bad run. And, you know, if we're going to gain any, any sort of consistency, uh, this is certainly not the one we, we want to gain. I mean, on, on top of that, it's not just the fact that our chance creation has been very, very bad as well. You know, on the eye, we, we look confused going forward. And this is a side that last year we were competing with Man City in English football for the most chances created and the most goals, most goals scored. 90 plus goals uh, in, in the entirety of English football. We look like a free, fluid, uh, exciting brand of, of football that we were playing. You know, the, the goals we were scoring were, you know, they were comebacks. They were winning games 3 or 4-0. Um, it was just, it's so exciting. And I don't want it's to come across as sort of like an arrogant sort of, you know, look what happened last year. You want to try and expect it all the time. You can't have bad times as a football fan because of course you can you know there'll be probably worse times than this but you've got to also look at it and go 
the players are fairly similar. We've got a few players leave, but generally at the core of this squad is, is fairly the same. And there's a huge change in the way that we're trying to play. And the playing style is all wrong and it's hindering us massively. Um, we've tried to sort of sacrifice some of our attacking play to sort ourselves out defensively. We conceded way too many goals last year. Um, we scored three goals and we conceded five. So we are still conceding an av or averaging a, a goal conceded every single game. And again, like I say, the chance creation is a huge drop off, not just a slight sacrifice. Um, it is, you know, falling off a cliff type of change. And I mean, like I say, we've tried to sacrifice some of our attacking play for some of our defensive play. We're still conceding five goals, um, five goals a game. Not that bad. Uh, we're still conceding uh, one goal every single game. So. Again, there isn't much change in that. And again, on the eye, I will give some credit. We do look a little bit stronger defensively, um, but it's not brilliant. A goal every single game averaging isn't, isn't, isn't the, the best record for a side that is trying to improve themselves uh, from the back. On top of that, injuries. We've, we've got to speak about the injuries. We can't speak about Oxford so far this season and not, uh, not touch on injuries because it has been an influence. As much as people try and say that you know injuries, they happen in football and they're you know, complete and utter luck, Yes, they, they do happen in football, and um, and some of it is an element of luck. But we've also, we don't help ourselves. We don't help ourselves. And I think we already are sort of seeing um, a little bit of risk-taking gone too far bite us on the backside a little bit, if I can say that. So seven players, I think it's now nine players that are out injured. I think I've added to the list a couple more. Um, seven players out injured. A large majority of them are new signings or players we gave new contracts to in the summer. Silly, 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 silly. The recruitment, once again, when it comes to recurring injury problems is just baffling, and I still don't get it. I would love to see Carl Robinson come out, or, and the recruitment team, really, and just be a little bit more honest about what they see when they do injury checks. And I, Look, they must do medicals, obviously. They, that has to happen. That happens in, in every single signing. But I've been intrigued to see whether or not those, those medicals come back as clean as maybe we try and play them out to be. And what I mean by that is, I don't really think these medical records are maybe as clean as what maybe we, we get told. We, we get told these players are match fit and they've you know been out for a year, but they've been had a really good preseason. They feel fine. They you know players with you know with multiple ACL injuries and and, and ongoing recurring issues don't tend just to come to Oxford United with a piece of armour around them and never get injured again. Um, these players have injuries, unfortunately, and it's a, it's a part of the game. And like I said, that is an element of, of unlucky for the play. But for Oxford, we can avoid that. We, we can avoid that, and we can do that by not really going near them. And that sounds harsh, but it, sometimes you've got to be brutal. You've got to look at the signs like Wigan and Rotherham that got promoted last year, Sunderland as well. They didn't just get lucky with the players they signed. They didn't all have problems with injuries, and they all just didn't get, a, didn't get an injury for the entire of the season. They recruited really, really well. And obviously, the pool has to be different the recruitment pool is something that has to be changed and again that's that's based on your budget that's based on the sort of stature of the club and your pulling power of the football club of course it is um but we do sort of tend to swim in the pool of um championship release players that have no got you know no doubt got talent but certainly carry you know recurring injury problems and you know for the majority of the season they you know, can play two games and are out for two weeks then come back for two games they might get a really serious injury be out till christmas they might get a really nice run of games for a couple of months and be out injured and don't see the end of the campaign yeah, and that and that isn't good enough because that's not going to get you promoted we'll read through some of them i mean the big one is marcus mcguain spoke about it originally I think it was a cramp that came out uh, when it first was uh, announced as a new injury he came out came off the pitch injured against Morecambe first and foremost it looked like it was uh, either a hamstring injury or maybe cramp he went down you know like he'd been um, like he'd been shot to be fair um, and uh, you could tell straight away that was going to be a bit of a concern but cramp you know that that can be a fairly um, comfortable injury to sort of see off but it doesn't look like it's going to be cramp because uh, he still seems to be carrying that injury now and he's going for a scan. So it's definitely not cramp. That looks to be a hamstring injury. Uh, Sam Ball looks on a new deal in the sun. We have not seen him play a game of football yet. That is, of course, a recurring injury problem. Uh, Yannick Wilchler, of course, I can't even pronounce his name, but we haven't seen him play yet. So that's my excuse there. Uh, we signed him in the summer. He looks like he's going to be out for a long, long time. Apparently, though, that is a freak injury. He hasn't been injured, but he is aging. Of course, he is 30. So uh, a big injury at 30 years of age isn't ideal. Again, uh, that might have been a little bit of I mean you can't really blame the recruitment there because if he hasn't had an injury before then again you, you can't predict that uh, but he is 30 and that might be a problem 
Uh, Josh Murphy, we signed him in the summer. He's had recurring injury problems. He was at MK Dons. He then played again. Did we get him from Cardiff? I think we got him on a free transfer from Cardiff. He's had loan spells. Uh, at Preston, I believe, as well. And he just hasn't been able to stay fit. Uh, he's a talented footballer, a brilliant dribbler, somebody that when he was at MK Dons with Carl Robinson, he very much uh, showed his quality. But he can't stay fit. And again, that comes down to a little bit of naivety. You can't be signing players that have got bad injury records and hope that they're going to come to Oxford and not have an injury again. It, it will happen. And of course, you can manage that and you can manage players. But you know, you, sometimes I've got to look at maybe the training. You've got to look at the, the way that the players are being trained and the recovery um, and uh, the, the, the medical department. Maybe they've got to sort of have a little bit of look at themselves and see where they, they might be making a mistake or might be going wrong. And the coaching team as well is training not being um, good enough for these players that can't deal with They've got recurring, you know, injury problems and can't deal with playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and training in between. And you shouldn't really need to be adapting your training style to fit players that can't stay fit. Because again, you know, that isn't football. That isn't how a top football side operates. That can't be how a top football side operates. Um, but sometimes maybe you've got to do that. Maybe as Oxford fans, sorry, as an Oxford United football club, you, you've got to be able to do that. Um, but it's not ideal. Marcus Brown, we signed him in January, of course. We knew he had an ACL injury, just recovered from an ACL injury. Uh, he didn't play much last year because he was still in sort of that rehab phase. And he's, of course, got a uh, very, you know, a, a very, very serious recurring injury there. And it uh, looks to be his knee as well. So he's gone back for a scan to speak to the person that did the operation on his knee. So that's going to be a long time out, we believe. Um, again, uh, he's a talented player, such a talented footballer. Um, but maybe again you look back now and you go was that just a bit of, you know a bit too much of a of a high risk you know although he's such a talented player we we spent you know a big budget on that i think something that came out i think it was in his pre-match interview against uh, Morecambe two thirds of the budget was spent on players that are currently out injured i mean that is something that Carl and the recruitment have got to take responsibility for you know they're the people that sign these players and you know, none of the, it's not, they're not all freak injuries. These are players that do have recurring injury problems. And again, we're fishing in the wrong pond. And we'll come onto the pond we might need to be fishing in going forward because this is certainly not the right one. James Henry just signed a new deal, but of course, he is aging at a few injuries last season. Uh, Marcus McGuane, our best player so far this season, gutted to see him injured. And now it's not cramp. I'm even more concerned. Elliot Moore, we don't know what's going on there. He could be back for Saturday. He's having a scan as well. He's our club captain. Um, Alex Gorin, he's just come back from an ACL injury. He's already out injured with a hamstring problem. I'm definitely missing some more. But, you know, I, I just look at this now and I go, I think we've got 13 outfield players fit. You know, we're dealing with, you know, I don't want to sound, we're dealing with a really, really tight squad. We're dealing with such a tight squad and we've got such a problem because we're not getting results on the pitch and we're having to deal with players that aren't ready. We're playing youth players that certainly aren't ready to be making impacts on games. They might not be starting, but we're bringing players on in sort of like the you know, 70th minute to try and change games. And these players are something like 22 and only just signed a professional contract a couple of years ago. I haven't been really you know in the first team whatsoever and we're sort of hoping they're going to change the game. It's not going to happen and it's not, not really the way you develop young talents. Um, and it, and it, again, you haven't really got those experiences heads around them, sort of guide them in the right direction because they're all out injured. So, I mean, Carl Robinson is stuck in a place now where you could go into the go into the transfer window and look at things, but he's trying to say he doesn't want to sort of change the long term plan. Maybe you don't. Maybe maybe you've got to sort of move away from worrying about that, and you've got to look at now, and you've got to look at the injury list now. You've got to look at the treatment room now. You've got nine players out injured. Maybe you've just got to bring in a few players to increase in numbers. And um, you know, I'm not a professional football manager. I never probably will be. But I can tell you now, we're going to be in a real problem if we're waiting for all of these players to come back fit, and we're not making. I mean, I, I, I think we're probably going to make a couple more signings, but we need to make more than a couple because these are big players, and. Um, you know, people. You can't be naive in these situations. Teams can go down like this. Teams can get relegated. That might sound better dramatic, but teams can get relegated um, by having really, really bad injury problems and um, not replacing them and hoping they're going to come back. And maybe they don't come back, or maybe they do come back and they're not the same player. Or it takes a long time for them to sort of you know, get back into the rhythm of things because they've been out for so long. Teams can get relegated with that. And um, you know, if that, I mean, I don't think we will get relegated, by the way. But I'm trying to say is, you you can't rely on the fact that they might all come back absolutely fine or they're all going to come back when they say they're going to come back. You know, injuries are such a big part of football, but they're also ever-changing. And uh, players can be out longer, players can come back quicker, players can come back quicker, then get injured again. You know, it's just unpredictable. And um, some of it can be helped. Recruitment, being more intelligent with the recruitment and fishing in the right pond. But 
when you're in this reality, you can't really look back and you've got to look at the, the, the sort of the current and uh, and sort of look at the problem in front of you. We're already having to change systems and lineups. I mean, we've played a well, we played a narrow a narrow diamond. We played a four three three in the cup yesterday against Crystal Palace. I mean, that's a little bit of an anomaly. Of course, it's the Carabao Cup. We played a lot of uh, kids. We did very very well in that. To be fair, you know, the first half we we kept them that down to nil nil, and we actually looked quite lightning. Second half though, it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't you know it it, it was just the, the Premier League side uh, getting the better of us, and that was always what we kind of expected. And they did very very well and, and fair play to them. They took their chance really. The the young lads. It was a really big opportunity for them, and they did a really good job. Um, but in that game, we played a three at the back. You know, we played a, a diamond against Morecambe. That didn't really work. You know, Carlson has sort of built his success as a manager off playing with wingers and playing with these wide players. We're now not really doing that. Um, we haven't got the players to do that ultimately, and um, we look marginally exciting um, when we, you know, when we can see goals. And that's the only time we really look great when we go one 0 down and we, you know, not really leading in games. We then come back and we fight back. It's, look, it's. Um, it's worrying. It's it's worrying. We're also sort of leading back to on the pitch now. We've sort of touched a little bit off it. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got my notes down here. Some of the things I think I've written were a little bit of um, a little bit of um, straight after the game sort of things. I mean, I've put here we're relegation fodder, scrapping for points at home, and I think that might be a little bit harsh, but it is true. I don't think we are relegation fodder. I think we are in a relegation battle, but I don't think we're relegation fodder. We've got a good squad when everyone's fit, but the squad that's available um, ultimately isn't good enough. And that's not down to them. That's down to the fact we haven't got depth whatsoever. We can't change games in the middle of games. You know, these players can't play Saturday, Tuesday. They will, you know, collapse. They haven't got the bodies to do it. And uh, you're relying on a very limited squad anyway. Those players can get injured through playing too many games of football and be too, he- you know, heav- heavily reliant on. And that, again, is something that we've got to see and, and hope that doesn't happen. Um, look, you know, going forward, I've already spoken about it. We look out of ideas. We don't look... look, look any any sort of the side we were last year. The fullback is a bit of an issue as well. We haven't got any depth really at right back. Left back, we've got a little bit of depth with, with sort of Seddon and, and Brown. Are they the left backs that Carlson really wants to build his team from? Probably not really. We have the importance of fullbacks. I don't think at the moment it's about sort of perfecting a squad for promotion. It's about sort of seeing what we've got and being a deal with what we've got and trying to get out of the position that we're in. I don't think it's about hey, this is a right back that's going to get us promoted. This has got to be, this is a right back that we can sort of hope that can get us out of the problem that we're in. And I don't mean Sam Long isn't that man, but I'm talking about the depth in that position because we haven't got depth in that position whatsoever. Uh, I look forward to our next games. I mean, actually, before I look forward to our next games, I look forward to the games we've we've ju- look back to the games we've just seen. Uh, Derby haven't really looked all of it. Bristol Rovers have lost their last two. Lincoln got battered four 0 in their last game. Morecambe haven't won a game this season. And Cambridge, who we actually beat, are doing the best, and they're eleventh in the league as well. So the sides that we you know drop points to, or haven't played well against, or you know just you know have, have either lost to or drawn to. They're not doing brilliantly either. And what does that say about the opposition we've got coming up? We've got Cheltenham on Saturday. That's going to be really, really tough. We've got Shrewsbury after that. I think we've got Burton as well um, in, in there. And uh, we've still got Ipswich twice. We've still got Peterborough twice. We've still got Sheffield Wednesday twice. We've still got Pompey twice. We've still got Bolton twice. We've got all of these sides we've got to play um, back to, you know, not back to back, but twice. And... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about that. I'm a, I'm a little bit worried about that. Hopefully, we can have some, a few players back for them because at the moment, these this sort of situation and the, the opposition that we're playing at the moment, without sort of disrespecting them, that yeah, that that really is um, that really is a problem. Defensively, we do look a little bit better on the eye, but we still conceded five goals in five games. So a side that's been improving defensively. Still conceding and averaging, uh, you know, a goal conceded every single game. So that again is um, something that Carl Robinson's got to look at because, you know, we we sacrificed our attacking play for this and we're still conceding goals. Let maybe it's not the amount of goals we would have conceded last year and you know, a goal every game. It's not awful. But you've got to score and um, we're not scoring either. So um, that's why the narrow defeats are happening. That's why we're losing one nil and two one and one one. And they're all low scoring games because even the game we won, we won one nil um, because you can't rely on us scoring goals and if you're still averaging a goal you know every game we're conceding and we're not scoring goals I mean at least last year we conceded a couple but we scored quite a lot we got away with it but this year you're still conceding just one you've got to score some because otherwise you're going to drop you know going to drop so many points um through the season um so much transfer winner then what are the repercussions of that we're already facing them we have made some helpful additions. I don't think our summer transfer window has been awful, but we spoke about it originally when it came out, uh, or when the window opened, and when this sort of whole discussion. I spoke. I, I did lots of other clubs, and I spoke about Oxford really, really. I did a dedicated episode on that actually, didn't I? And I said that I'm dreading the season with the title. I think I got that one. I know only five games in, slightly correct. Um, but we lacked urgency. We lacked urgency, and I was worried about being underprepared. And I stick by that. 
I think we were underprepared. I think we uh, waited too long on players that weren't really ever interested in coming, if that if that's what you want to believe. And I also think we panicked a few of the signings. I think some of them were panic signings. I don't think all of them we were looking at from the start of the window. I think we got to a point where we knew we needed to get some players through the door. And there's a few free players from championship release clubs that ultimately we were able to sort of pick up. And um, I still think we are underprepared because I think we have seen a window where we've sort of gone and hoped and taken a few punts on players that might stay fit. And even the players that are staying fit maybe aren't working hard enough. Jody Jones, the plan hinted out there, came up yesterday. He's not in the starting eleven because he's not working working hard enough. I mean, you signed him, Carl. You signed him and uh, there's a risk on that anyway with the fact that he's always injured and he's been injured for a long, long time of his career at Coventry. He's talented, but you signed him. So again, coming out and talking about, you know, being you know, not working hard enough, I mean, that is down to you. You, you know, he, he went to Spain with us on a, on a training camp. He spent the whole of pretty much pre-season playing games for us. Um, so again, you, you, responsibility, it comes down to responsibility and who's going to take that responsibility? Of course, Jody Jones has got to take the majority of it, but Robinson took that risk and, um, I mean, it looks as though so far, even the players we have signed, they're not even working hard either. So, you know, where do we go? Where do we go from here? You know, it's almost laughable now. Um, you know, what what can you do? You know, that that is just like, a, you know, that you just, I, I heard it and I just went, what can you say to that? What can you say to that? Um, of course, there's still holes in that side that needs to be resolved. Full backs is one. I know a lot of holes in that need to be resolved with the fact we've got so many players out injured, but we won't be filling all of those gaps. I do believe in in, in Carl saying that you know we, we don't need to be just bringing in loads of players because those players will eventually come back and then you're going to have a, a, a silly, silly squad. Um, but again, I've sort of contradicted myself what I said at the start. You've, you've got to find a balance and um, we do need more than just a full back. We, needed a few, we do need a few more players because again, we are really, really short in numbers and some of the injuries are more severe than others. Um, no director of football. Again, I don't think Carl Robinson wants a director of football, but he takes recruitment on him completely himself. So, you know, he has to take full responsibility for the recruitment that hasn't paid off. He's a manager, he's head of recruitment, director of football, chief negotiator, and actually the actively speaking chairman at the moment. So, you know, he's taking on all of these roles. So when things off the pitch don't go the way that he would have wanted to, or maybe when we don't think it's gone very well, he has to take that responsibility. And that's not really... <laughs> I mean, that is, that's because we haven't got a director of football and a head of recruitment isn't really someone that we see very often. It doesn't really come out and speak. Our managing director doesn't do any really, you know, doesn't really speak too much about recruitment whatsoever. So, you know, that's something that needs to probably be resolved. In the modern game, you, in the modern game, you can't really get away with that. You can't really get away with that. And a successful football club can't be ran like that anymore. It could be in the past, but now you do need people above that you can turn to and go, look, what what can you see? What have you gone out and seen? Because having a manager do all of that work, I mean, it's it's, it's really, really counteracting and it actually can be a real downfall of a manager uh, and as a football club, really. And Carlson, I think he's, he is a good coach, but he's not a director of football. He's not a negotiator. He's not a scout. Um of course, he has the say of the sign. I'm not saying, you know, Dutch football signs all the players and Carl just gets the players and works with them. He has to have a big say in it. But he can't do all of it. He can't go and... It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because in a situation like this, when you do need players on a short-term basis, you need a Dutch football that you can turn to and go, right, he's available on loan. He's available. He's available. And um, we might have that, but n- not in the way that a Dutch football would see things. Um, I mean, he's never a Dutch football at any of his previous clubs anyway. So, again... I don't expect him to have one, but that could be his downfall, to be fair. Um, yesterday, Carlton himself, I already mentioned this, but I think it's really important to say, two-thirds of the budget have been spent on players that are currently out injured. What can you do about that? I mean, it is be you know, more intelligent with the players that you recruit. Um I put it, do we do medicals? Do we think that even though players have serious recurring injuries, they will suddenly disappear at Oxford United? And again, as much as I'm being a little bit sarcastic in my notes there, it's true. You know, these players that have recurring problems, they don't just come to Oxford and grow this sort of like imaginary armour and they never get injured again in their life. They will continue to have injuries. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that massively this year. And it's not just this year, by the way. It's happened for multiple years. We've just got away with it because we've signed a few players that have got away with it. And we've signed a couple of players that weren't ever injury prone. And they've almost sort of hidden the players that were. This season we've signed a lot of players like that and there's been no real player that's hidden it Stuart Finley to an extent but not really um, and that again that's uh, that's something that you know, you've got to take responsibility for and it's only Robinson that can take responsibility because you can't blame a head of recruitment you can't blame uh, a director of football I think we do have a head of recruitment but like I said he's not an actively speaking person he's not someone you can sort of, you don't, don't know his face you don't really see him speak about the situation at all it's always Carl Robinson that speaks about transfers so he has to be to make it to, if he speaks to us we have to speak to him and that's basically the same for praise and same for criticism. 
I guess some of it is luck, but some of it is naive recruitment full of hope. Ultimately, we're fishing in the wrong pond. Pool? Pond. The bottom line is, why do we uh, go for the championship clubs release players in the first place? He's talented. On his day, he's a cracking player, but he can't stay fit. Red flag retreat. Those players are risky. Why are they being released from the championship clubs? Either because they're not in good form or because they can't stay fit. And uh, I think we're seeing some of the answers quite early on here. Um, he might be very, very talented. And when he is fit, he might be a brilliant, brilliant player, a championship level player. But if he can't stay fit, he's a League 2 player. And that sounds harsh and it's true. He's a League 2 player. If he can't stay fit, he's a League 2 National League player. Because if he can't stay fit, he's not playing football. And if he constantly is having injuries, that, that ability will slowly drop away and fade away because his ability will suddenly start taking effect for his injuries. And uh, I guess, again, that comes down to naivety. I mean, what is happening with Jody Jones? He couldn't get into the starting lineup against Crystal Palace yesterday. He hasn't played a minute, really, in the league. I don't think he's played a minute in the league. He might have come on, actually. No, he didn't come against Derby. Did he come against Bristol Rovers? He might have done. Um, is he injured or is he being told that he's not being injured? You know, he is injured, but we can't say he's injured, so he's going to play him on the bench. Um, or is he, you know, not working hard enough? It sounds like that is the case. Um, we're bringing Slavi Spazov off, somebody who's, a, again, a still a youth prospect instead of Jody Jones. What's that about? Again, that's got to come down to uh, conversations within that board and in that recruitment process that clearly weren't thought out. Um, and again, it's just, you know, it's just another sort of, another list, another lot, you know, another addition to a long, long list of problems that Oxford face at the moment. And actually somebody that wrote on the fans forum, Oxford United fans forum, it's a brilliant, brilliant place to sort of read everyone's opinions and you get a real contrast in opinion. Some people are, you know, really, really positive about situations. Some people are very negative about them. Some people sort of take a quite cautious road, almost sit through the middle, but you get such a brilliant contrast in opinions solely on the situation so far. So I want to read out this sort of post that came up on the fans' forum. I don't think that this was before the Crystal Palace game. It was after the Morgan game, but before the Crystal Palace game. And it reads as follows. Deep breath. I'll say it again for those at the back. It's sheer number of risks. And that is spot on. What I say when I, when I talk about injuries and talk about taking punts on players that might not be, you know, able to play every single game because they have got recurring injury problems, that all comes down to the word risk. They are all risks. Sometimes they pay off. Sometimes they don't. And so far this season, a lot of them haven't. It's also a complete and utter myth that decent players at this level must have obvious drawbacks. Why are players in our recruitment poll more susceptible to injuries, for example? Players are where they are for a variety of reasons. Ability is one. You can hear me out here. Get players with decent league one ability who are also bear with me. Fully fit and not injury prone. It's true. I gave you an example earlier. Ryan Williams. We signed him for Pompey having played plenty of recent football to a high standard at this level and beyond with sides either promoted or challenging for promotion. He was fit and available for the section of the majority of the season. We let uh, Ryan Williams, of course, go for family reasons, we believe, to Australia. Um, but again, that's a really, really good example. He was released by Pompey because he wasn't really happy not playing as much as he was going to. And we signed him up. He played League One football. He didn't have injury, bad, uh, injury records. And he played the majority of the season. He was one of our really, really promising players last year. And, um, I mean, he's right. that the, the drawbacks don't have to be there unless you try and bring in players that have risks with drawbacks. And that's what we're doing at the moment. Ryan Williams didn't have that and you can get away with it. And Ryan Williams is a brilliant example. You've completely spoiled the car arms and nonsense. Uh, either sign decent players with a dodgy pass or else we end up with poor quality substandard players. I absolutely accept that to get players or potentially upper championship quality players, Brown or Murphy, these will often come with risks. There are also plenty of players available who are good at this level without any baggage or even below. Particularly now we're with an increased budget. New board, apparently we've got an increased budget. How did Rotherham go up or Wigan? Did they get lucky that all of their injury-prone players are, are, are those plagued by personal issues just happened to be okay last season? What luck for them? Of course not. They signed players like Tom Nader from Pompey with a consistent track record at this level of both regular playing time and uh, game time. Not a crock, yes, still good footballer capable of winning promotion at this level. They do exist at every level. Chris Wilder found them when they were in the conference. We need a manager who can, play, who can find plenty of them in League One. So what he's basically trying to say there is... There are players in League One and even in League Two that we can go and sign. League Two players that are hungry, that are driven, that want to make that step up. Why do we not go down and try and look at those type of players? We've got Rob Atkinson from Eastleigh in the National League. Uh, and he's gone up to play for Bristol City. And he's now playing regular football in the Championship. He never had injury problems. He still hasn't had injury problems. Even our Irish connections this year haven't been great. You know, we look at players that we haven't really sort of swum in that pool. Other than Ed McGinty, the goalkeeper. Players like Mark Sykes who's gone, Gavin White who have now gone. But these are players that we got from Ireland and these are players that you know, proved to be really, really good and hungry as well. They wanted to make that step up. They were really driven and hungry to prove themselves at this division. Players like Brown and Murphy, they've played in the championship and their role is now to try and get a league one club into the championship. 
I'm not saying they haven't got drive, they haven't got drive, they haven't got ambition, they don't care. I'm not saying that whatsoever. But players in you know in League One, uh, sorry, in, in League One and League Two, that's the type of pool I think we need to be going down, and we're missing out on that pool massively. And if we have got an increased budget, we can look at that and we can go down that route, but we decide not to. We decide not to. You know, Marcus Brown was apparently quite a big fee. We could have got a few League Two players for that. That are, you know might not be great right now, but could be young, could grow, or maybe we could go for a twenty-five-year-old who's doing very, very well in League One, at League Two, and we could then get them into. To, you know, that, what I'm trying to say is, I haven't got an ultimate answer, but I'm not recruitment. I'm not head of direct. I'm not director of football or head of recruitment. I'm just somebody that's sort of seeing what's going wrong now and sort of posing maybe a, a potential solution. And uh, finally, what can we be doing uh, to improve Oxford United? I say we, I mean, we can't do much as fans. We can just get behind the players again and sort of point out mistakes that are being made and hopefully that the, the fans, um, sorry, the, the players and the managers do, do take that on board. But ultimately, it's down to managers. It's down to the manager, it's down to the players, and it's down to the, the staff or everyone around that football club to improve things. Um, ultimately, uh, every system and formation is uh, being flawed at the moment with injuries. So we've got to try and find... And I, look, I wrote this before all these injuries came through. You could play a 3-4-1-2, uh, but ultimately the, the problem you've got is the lack of squad depth and the injuries is, is going to be such an issue. Um, and um, whatever you try and play, whatever formation you try and play, there's going to be massive drawbacks because of the injuries that you've got and because the squad depth in those positions simply aren't good enough. Based on performances so far this season, we just need to play with a little bit. I think we're overcomplicating it. Freedom for me is the big one. The players going forward, they look just so. You have to stand there and you can't move. You have to stand there and you can't move. You need to be more free. Let the players go and express themselves. It sounds cliche. It sounds really sort of like. You know, it sounds wet. It sounds quite disgusting. But you know, you look at what we've done previous years. We've just let the let the players play with a little bit of freedom. We've sort of seen it the past few years, and we've been really, really good going forward. We've just let them go. Let them go and do what they what they need to go and do. And if that does expose them at the back a little bit, we might just have to sit and go right. Maybe we just aren't going to be good enough defensively uh, at the moment. But we can't. That can't hinder us being such a good side going forward. Because like I keep saying, you can't be considering one you know, every single game and not you know not scoring enough, enough at all. Because you will drop points and you will lose lots of games of football, and we, you will get yourself into some serious bother. Teams that don't score enough goals tend to get relegated, or or you know, or, or, or horror around mid table if they've got good good defences. If you can see a lot of goals and don't score money, a little Michael Owen there for you. You probably will get relegated, and you'll be in deep deep trouble, and you probably will lose games of football. But yeah, that, that's sort of my breakdown so far this season. The big question you've been asking me is, do, do I think Carl Robinson should be sacked? My answer is uh, no. I, I don't think he should. I don't think you can sack somebody with the injury issues you've got at the moment. Of course, he's got to take responsibility for that. Some of that is uh, down to him, but I don't think you can sack someone for that um, because, again, he hasn't got his full you know, full set of players there. He hasn't got his strongest 11. If he's losing games consistently with his strongest 11, then maybe something's got to be done. But I don't see an issue with keeping Carl Robinson. But ultimately, you know, a new manager isn't going to just come in and, 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 and wipe the injury issues that we've currently got and they're going to bring all the players that are currently injured back into the squad because ultimately, they're going to be dealing with the same group of players than we're, that we're dealing with at the moment. And those Players are, you know, short of confidence it seems at the moment, but also, um, you know, dropping points. But there's no squad depth behind them, and again, every like I say, every formation has got its flaws. And no, I don't think he should be sacked. Um, I think that's very, very reactionary early doors. Like I say, we probably are already hitting crisis point for injuries for the fact we are in a in a relegation battle early doors. It's been a really, really bad start to the season. Things on and off the pitch are going very, very wrong. But you can't take a manager for the fact that he hasn't had his full set of players available to him. If he lost, you know, five, six games on the bounce with his full, you know, full available set of players, then maybe there have to be a real investigation into it. But at the moment, you know, he's dealing with the players that he's got, and like I keep saying he does have to take responsibility for that but that is the situation we currently find ourselves in and we've got to move forward and Cheltenham now has to be that big focus the young lads did really really well against Crystal Palace um you know you know dealing you know dealing with a very very good Premier League side and hopefully some of them might get into that 11 on Cheltenham on Saturday but we'll have to wait and see but this has been my sort of talk about Oxford so far it's been very very long hopefully it's not too long hopefully you did enjoy it breaking down what's been a really bad start to the season hopefully a win on Saturday we'll have to see about that but uh, take care stay safe and I'll see you all very very soon take care